assists, right? But yeah. I also understand that, like, when I got back from Paris, I had a lot of debt to pay off. Oh, my God. So I went straight into bartending, and I was like, I can't yep. I can't afford to assist. I can't afford to test. Yeah. So I also know that advising everyone to just assist to figure out right. what they want to do or how to do certain things mm-hmm. isn't the best advice for everyone because th- some people can't afford that. I was going to say, and I don't know. I mean, maybe this is just me. I don't. I did it for a very short period of my career, yeah. assisting, because yeah. I got similar advice where it was like, if you want to learn new techniques, you want to meet people, you want to get on different sets, you want to understand just seeing how other people do things yeah. and then taking little tokens, if you will, along mm-hmm. the way from these pros that mm-hmm. have been mm-hmm. doing it. I understand the depth in it, and I do think it's a needed thing in our industry. Um, I also think it's a place where, ag- again, if you're not aligned with that person, oh my you are not going to have a Again, good time doing dating. it. Dating. dating. It's like, like, oh. Making sure your vibe is on point with them, especially yeah. if like, you're their first assistant. Mm-hmm. You have to vibe with them real well. Real well. Real well. Because Girl. you are their right hand person. Yep. Making moves before they even like. That's what they told us at Makeup Forever, which yeah. intimidated me because I was like, oh my God, what if I don't yeah. know what brush they're going to reach for? They were yeah, like, you need to know, know what I'm doing the next. With experience. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I'm like, this is a lot to juggle where I'm like just starting out. But a yeah. lot of people, and I I do advise it, but I also am like, I mean, I guess it's hard because then how do kids know what to do? Kids, I know. To know what to do on set if they're not assisting, to have somebody be yeah. like big brother to them to be like, this is the lay of the land. And I only started assisting like, like two, like a little bit before pandemic. Yeah. And that for me was a learning curve. Oh. Because you, you come in as an artist thinking that you already – know what yeah, you're like kind I of got doing. it right you yeah, have your like, flow I've been you know blindly fighting my way through this industry yeah. thinking I okay I, I kind of got it if I've been having these jobs it's because I know what I'm doing but right. being an assistant is completely different than being the main makeup artist oh my god you have to remove that job. ego you have to remove yeah. I mean unless they I've heard different things and I agree on that because yeah. it's you're really there to be a facilitator you're there to help right um as much as possible yeah. in whatever way you're being told to help right is how you're going to help not right. in the ways that maybe you think is going to be helpful yeah. <laughs> so you're like you got to really like sit back and yeah. like it's a lot of like yeah. I think like tug and pull because exactly. you're like I gotta what I gotta be what is the word um proactive completely but then also I don't want to make the wrong move like oh my god one time a big artist uh-huh. I <laughs> touched her airbrush Okay. And she did not like that because I thought I was being proactive right. in getting this next model done yeah. because it needed to get done. Yeah. So, and I was assisted. So I grabbed the airbrush that we had been using yeah. and I start airbrushing her and she comes over and she's like, absolutely not. Literally was like, put that down. What are you doing? And I was like, I just. Was she super mean about it? Or no, like, okay, no. She, she was, was she was strict. Like I definitely, I'm a pussy. I'm a pussy. Yeah, yeah. I got scared. <laughs> I was like, I'm fired. I'm never going to work again. It's always in my head. But. I was like, okay. And I was just like, I'm so sorry. Like, I just thought I was do- you doing the you, right yeah, thing. Of so on top of that, even as if you have great intentions as yeah. well, that's where I had to learn. You got to have some thick skin. And yeah. I think a lot of the upcoming generations are have very soft skin. Yeah. And um, that's just with people, in my opinion, in general. And I think, I mean, my God, I was talking to an artist friend the other day about it. It's with those scenarios. You can't be broken in that minute. If she comes over to me and yells and there's people watching and I'm morally embarrassed and maybe it wasn't the best. She probably could have taken me aside. Sure, sure. Didn't need to do it in front. But we're all human. You know, she was reactive in a situation and it is what it is. So moved, you know, dealt with it afterwards and it was fine. She said, I didn't mean to be upset. I just, you know, didn't want you to, you didn't run it by me. So it all got broken down accordingly. And I learned from that experience immensely to just ask the questions I can be proactive, but also ask questions. Completely. Do you know what I mean? And also but knowing like, how to like set your ego aside and like yes. just keep working and not just have a full breakdown. And then she has to focus on oh my like God. building you back up instead of like just getting the job done. Right. And actually what she needs from you. Right. Um, Huge. I wanted to. Ten years ago, assisting was completely like the advice oh. I get from people that Hugely. have been assisting mm-hmm. or started their careers assisting thirty years ago versus yeah. that people that are assisting now. Everyone's so different. You're Everyone's right. Everyone's so so different. The treatment you get, like some people don't, some people don't want their assistants to talk at all. At all. And some people like when they have a personality. And right. You have to kind of learn to navigate that as yep. well. Yep. Yep. It's huge. It's very interesting. 
I like the referencing the dating that you made because yeah. it is. It's like, well, what do you like? What are you into? Like, yeah. do you want me to like preemptively yeah. wash your brushes? Yeah. Do you like it this? Some people don't even like it when you pack their kit. They just want you to lay it all out or yeah. they'll pack it up. It's very interesting. It's but so funny. Once yeah. you get it down, yeah. it becomes muscle memory. Completely. You pop on set with that person. You know what to expect. Yeah. You know where they want this. And it's great. So yeah. to, to give people at least not a scare away from assisting as well, it's like you once you get through that – yeah you know beginning stage like anything else nothing's yeah. really that easy in this career to jump it's not no I don't think I've had not. anything that's been extremely breezy in a sense where it didn't come with immense for me personally amounts of anxiety mm-hmm. stressing overthinking over preparing sleepless nights to get ready for that big job or that new job you know yeah. it's a it's an ever thing that you gotta continue to work on and build yourself up but I do bring it back to the point about people's thick skins is I'm, I'm interested to see how this generation I like where we're moving in a sense where people are setting better boundaries yeah because I think that lacked in yeah. our generations coming uh-huh. up you know but I think there's that medium grade where you also have to under- take critique and I think yeah. people have a very hard time taking critique especially when it comes to like you're you're allowed to be wrong yeah. I remember even generations after makeup forever in my <laughs> school and I would hear the teachers telling me about the students and how they'll cry and break down when they're like, you didn't do this right, or this doesn't look good, or this isn't, you know, right. technically right. And they're just like, what? Yeah. Because you could throw makeup up to subjective all day long. Completely. That's the hard part where you're like, well, it's subjective. It's art. And yeah. you're like, it is. But. <laughs> but there are also things to it. Do you feel that way? That, like, you can look at a makeup and be like, I understand where the heart is in it, but to me it's not technically good. Yeah, it's really tough. I It, it is subjective, but there are yeah. things that just have historically worked for the environment yep. and, and haven't, and things have changed. Yeah. Just like matte and highlight. Now there's oh, set like a little in between, but before yeah. it was like you yep. know, super, super matte. I'm glad that I kind of started makeup or – really focused on it a mm-hmm. little bit later in my life yeah because I do feel like I had that thicker skin I didn't start assisting until I was like 26 oh, good for you. and I'm and so I had young. taken <laughs> I it. but that's the thing if you're young and so malleable you kind of think that everything that they're saying is true yes and you you take everything as a fact and yeah. not just as their opinion Oof, or as right. their experience right mm-hmm so that's really scary because if somebody's so malleable, how can they like learn how to separate that and be like, okay, that's okay, that's how they like it. If if next time maybe another artist might right. like it a completely different way, right. maybe the next artist is like, hey, can you get the airbrush and completely do their face? Right. I've been on sets where they literally just want me to hold Q-tips, and I've been on sets where I do half of the people's makeup and the artists completely trust me. Right. And I'm like, oh, my God, they trust me. Right. This is amazing. This is big stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, every, every experience is different. But yeah. if you can afford to assist, I think that's a wonderful option. Oh, oh, oh.